I built up three different CPU cards and let's take a look at them. They're based on Grant Cyril's simple CPU designs. First card is a 6502 CPU and it's running Microsoft Basic. Second card is a 6809 card and it's also running Microsoft Basic. And the third card is a Z80 card also running Microsoft Basic. This should let us get a nice comparison of the performance of the three cards. They're all pretty simple designs. They all have the CPU of course, a RAM. The RAM chip on the 6502 and the 6809 are both 32Ks. The RAM on the Z80 is a 128K but it's only using 64K or actually 56K. They all have a flash memory for the Microsoft Basic. They all have a 68B50 UART so they're very similar in performance. They have connections for RS-232 but I'm using the FTDI connection on each of them so they're exactly the same for that and they're all running at 115.2 K baud rate. So it should get a good comparison. Now one of the differences is the 6502 and the 6809 are running at 1.8432 megahertz which is the clock used for the baud rate but the Z80 card runs at four times that speed. But let's look at the performance and see if it actually gets four times the speed. It's kind of an interesting apples to apples comparison. Now it's Microsoft Basic with different vintages and the difference in ages might might play into it. I don't know how different the basics are in terms of code but I know Microsoft tended to reuse stuff that they'd written before. So. Uh, this will be kind of an interesting little test. I, I like Grant's design. It's pretty simple. I don't, didn't build any expansion logic onto these cards or expansion connectors. So they're very basic, just CPUs with a serial port. For our performance test, we'll use a pretty simple little program here. It loops for 10,000 loops and just prints out a number. And let's try that out and see how it works. I'm running TerraTerm and in this particular test is for the Z80. I've performed it for all three CPUs. If I right click and paste it, it'll paste it and if I type run, it'll run and I don't think we have to watch the whole thing but let's look at the different performance results. For the Z80 the speed was 27 seconds. Now remember this is 7 point, uh, 7.3728 megahertz CPU. So it's quite a bit faster, four times faster than 1.8432 megahertz CPU for the other ones. But let's see what we get for the other CPUs. For the 6809, the speed we got was 52 seconds. And for the 6502 CPU, the speed we got was 38 seconds. So on a clock per clock basis, the 6502 was, was fastest, but you can buy a faster Z80 so uh, on an absolute speed this the Z80 was faster so I'd say the Z80 won the speed test uh, with a advantage of being a faster CPU but if you're sitting back in uh, I don't know 19s 1970s I don't think uh, necessarily an 8 megahertz CPU was available at the time maybe it was I don't know I'd have to look but it's a pretty nice little setup. Now the one thing I had to do was set the transmit delays. Uh, these probably could be smaller numbers but they were set inside TerraTerm and they let you have a delay after each character so that when you download it it goes um, without dropping characters. If I hit reset 
and I do a cold start just to see what it looks like. And I hit a couple returns. You can see it might be too small to see, but you can see it's 56K of RAM also. So there's more memory available with the Z80 than the 32K in Grant's simple design. And the performance is better. But if you want to play around with 6502s or 6809s or Z80s, Grant's design is very nice for that. Again, I didn't build any expansion connectors or anything onto it. I just built the absolute simplest design possible with, if you want the absolute simplest, you can just connect up with FTDI. But if you want more of the old school, you can hook up with the RS-232 connector out the back. Again, I don't know what the difference between a 1977 vintage 6502 Microsoft Basic is or a 1982 Coco Basic on the 6809 or a Z80 1978. So they're all kind of in the same era. Um, certainly Microsoft would have had to do different things because they're all written in assembly back in the day uh, to make them work on the different CPUs. But I would think that they're probably fairly similar. I don't know if there's anything built in the 6809 to be better, but its performance was the worst, which surprised me. Honestly, I expected the 6809 to be as good or better than the 6502 especially considering the 6502 is intended to be a cost-reduced version like of a 6800 and the 6809 is sort of all in that same generation. So interesting results. I'll, I'll be putting these cards up on Tindy to sell at some point here. I just wanted to get a quick initial cutout here of, of the performance. I've added a... Uh, very few things to what Grant has in his design. One of the things I did add was a power supervisor chip. It's optional. In fact, the Z80 version here doesn't even have it installed. It works just the same to hit the reset button. But I wanted a little cleaner reset, and I didn't want to have to necessarily press the reset button when I turned it on for it to work. Other than that, they're all built on our standard ODAS 95 by 95 millimeter card form factors and very similar placement of the RS-232 connector out the back. So I gave you a little chance to play with old metal. I built quite a few FPGA uh, CPUs, retro CPUs, with the same software on them based on Grant's FPGA designs in the past and thought I would play around with looking at what it was like to have some bare metal cards. Because I know a lot of people are, say, oh, you know, I want the bare metal. I don't want an FPGA FPGA quote emulation, even though it's uh, gates or gates to me, whether inside of an FPGA or inside of the CPU, having the real CPU is kind of nice. Um, I like to run some performance, other performance tests on here. Some of the uh, other tests like the XESALL -E test and others to see sort of uh, how close for the Z80 it is to actually being a good emulation. The FPGA does fail some tests for the Z80 processor test, so that should be another interesting thing to try as well. But just having the old school metal, I mean, back back in the day, I would love to have had any of these three cards to play with. I had made my own 6800 card and had some success with that and then bought an Ohio Scientific C1P, which is basically the 6502 CPU. But it's kind of nice to have some cards that I can just pick up and run sort of the bare metal type stuff on. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll probably throw up some more videos on these in the near future as I play around with some more. Oh, one other thing, one of the things I did like is they're really minimal, just a few LS or HC or HCT gates uh, chips on it. The 6502 has three chips, one of them does a clock generator. The other two are logic for the chip selects. The simplest by far with one single logic chip is the 6809. And the Z80 is close with two as well. So one, two, or three $1 logic chips. And you got a, and some vintage type parts here. And you got a simple CPU. Uh, 68, 
B50s are, are not being currently produced, so I bought those on eBay for all three cards. Uh, the RAM's currently produced. The ROM I got, it's Flash 27F256 uh, parts, and then have jumpers on the cards to select for different sizes, but I've jumpered them for these same parts on all three cards. So they're, they're sort of vintage old and new. The RAM is all new. Um, I think, and maybe it's some older parts here on the, might be some older parts here on the 6809. Um, you can buy the, all the, these chipsets can be bought. I think the Z80s can still be bought as a Z80, but the 6502 and the 6809 can be purchased on eBay for a reasonable price for a complete chipset. So anyhow, again, thanks for watching. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products, and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.